Welcome to The Metal Boys. Today on the show, it's me and Neil Turbin. We're going to be reviewing the new album by Ghost. We're just checking out the new Ghost album. You know, it's a, an interesting album, to say the least. Definitely a departure from their pat, their previous releases. And I think it, this, this is a big one for them. You know, they've gone completely mainstream. And uh, I think it's an interesting album for us to review at The Metal Voice. Also on the show... We have Neil Turbin. He's interviewing. Tell me the band, Neil. We're, we're interviewing the Necromantics, who just played um, at the Airliner Club in uh, downtown Los Angeles. They had a rockabilly, rock, uh, psychobilly show. But let's begin with the Ghost. Ghost. The band has. Ghost. This is their fourth album called Prequel. And no more. Every, as you know, in every Ghost album, there's a new Papa, there's a new Pope. But this time around, it's Cardinal Copia. Cardinal Copia is on vocals. So right off the bat, I mean, this album has, I believe, 10 songs. Let me just double check this. Yeah, it's 10 songs. And the first thing I noticed on this album is it's a lot more accessible. The first three Ghost albums were a lot more like Pentagram, a lot more like Blue Oyster Cult a lot more darker, a lot more satanic. This time around, it's more accessible. Would you agree with that, Daniil? Yeah, can I change my name for this interview and call it Papa Sick Boy? You can, you can. <laughs> Papa Sick Boy Motorcycles. <laughs> All right, cool. So so Papa Sick Boy has got to say that, you know, Dance Macabre, I think that's a, an amazing track. It's, it's probably my favorite track on the album. Right away, it hits you, you know, with this sound that they have, you know, which is... Uh, you know, you, you get some mixed emotions when you hear that. It's uh, somewhere in the crossroads of, uh, you know, I don't know, just it gives me this this feeling of uh, ABBA to a certain extent, the Bee Gees. Yes, ABBA would be, yes, I mean, the are, ABBA are, and Bee Gees. You know, a metalized version of ABBA and the Bee Gees without the, the high voices. And then all of a sudden, it's like Klaus Mann from the Scorpions meets, um, you know, uh, just kind of uh ario speedwagon or something i don't know yes like, ario got, speedwagon you know, would be it yes you've got very very pop oriented sounds going on and the keyboards are very prog so i think you have this keyboard sound that is um reminiscent of lover boy and you know some of the 80s bands that have you know these very strong keyboard lines within the music and i mean the vocals are very you know accessible and you know it looks like um i don't know a uh, bathory meets uh you know, you, they look like Bathory, but they sound like uh, Super Trap. You know, Abba. <laughs> <laughs> or Abba. Yeah. It's, I mean, I got to say this. Klaus Mein. This is a good one. Klaus Mein sings the final countdown from Europe. There you that's go. What, there you go. That's, I mean, that, that's the way it hit you, the keyboard, you know? I believe it's Tobias Forge, who's actually the real singer. I mean, we don't know who wrote this album. We don't know who the songwriters are. Very limited information. Heck, we don't even know who wrote all the other albums. All we do know is they're nameless ghouls. And uh, Tobias Forge uh, is, you know, Papa whatever, right? So bottom line is, I agree with you, man. That's a great song. Also, another cool uh, dance, Makarov, is an amazing song. I also like See the Light with a nice yep. piano intro. You know, a very big single, a very cool keyboard solo, very memorable. And, you know, you could see this being played on AM and FM radio, right? Faith. For sure. They're going to get a lot of airplay. Without Faith. It I like Faith a lot. It's got that little little bit of that Arabic scales happening, sort of like the guitar breaks. And a lot actually, of European influence on the guitars, a lot of you know heavy metal guitar playing. I mean, very yeah. very progressive guitars, and you know obviously you can tell that they're a heavy rocking band when you hear that second song, you know, the third song. Yep, yep. With and, the vocals. And I mean, I do like the single, the first single, which was Rats. You know, very creepy song. Some cool. Yeah, Rats again, is an interesting song. I like that one probably third. I, li I like the. Which Image, the last song of the album, I thought that was also uh, one of their stronger songs. I don't know. It sounds like Desmond Child was writing songs for him or something. I, you, you know, know what? It's that's that is such to me. that is such a good point. It seems like on this album they've they've strayed away from the pentagram blue oyster cult sound, and now they're writing with you know Desmond Child, you know Jim Steinman, you know all the big names. It just feels like they're trying to get that big single. They're trying to get away from S Satan. They're trying to run away from Satan. They're trying to be more accessible. There are two 
instrumentals. Actually, there are three instrumentals. An intro called Ashes, which is like Ring Around the Rosie. And then there's two other instrumentals. The first one I really liked, but then the second one is kind of like, oh my God, is this filler? It's called Hella Vefonster. Hella Vefonster? I, I don't know what the hell. Is it Hella Vefonster? I don't know what it's called. Um, I don't know how to pronounce that. But you know what? That's where it felt like filler. So out of 10 songs, three of them really weren't really holding up well for me. And then the last song is called Life Eternal, which I thought was just very repetitive and sort of generic. And again, they were just sort of scraping the bottom of the barrel for some material. I think the instrumentals are, um, you know, they're very they're interesting. I think it would have been better served to have segues like the first song is kind of more of more of an intro for the album, an intro versus a, a song. I think they, they really could have gone in the direction to, you know, do segments, you know, make it an interesting album by having 30 seconds of that versus four or five minutes of a complete song. But, you know, there's going to be a lot of that, uh, I guess, in their live show where it's this big staging, you know, big production. And, you know, that's kind of part of their, their deal. But I don't know. I feel like the, the benefit would have been to maybe consolidate those those intros into, you know, make it a story for each song and have more songs with vocals. But, you know, they have three albums before this, so they don't really need to do that. They have another... Ghost is already a very popular band. They're headlining the, the forum here in Los Angeles. So, I mean, you know, they're they're able to do that. But, I, I, I mean, and people accept them. They love the band. But I find them, you know, this is really, for me, an introduction to the band because I haven't really listened to them a whole lot before. So I think they're absolutely talented players, you know, definitely a, a solid band. And, you know, there's definitely, um, you know, the ability to do these instrumentals. But, you know, you, when you do that kind of instrumental playing, I mean, you're, you're competing with the Jeff Becks of the world and all that. And I don't know. Instrumental music is cool. There's so many great players out there. It's like... It just seems like it's 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 part of their sound. It's part of what they do, but it's not the primary thing. So I don't know. It sounds like it filler make, to me. Filler. Yeah, it, it should be like taken more of, of a back seat. It should be more like the the background music in a movie versus the the front. So the front I'm just track. gonna so Neil, I'm just gonna summarize here, okay? So Ashes was the intro. Rats, we both agree, is a great song. Faith, yep, like another rats. great song. See the light. Beautiful song, the big, big hit single, Masma, which was the first instrumental that was cool, but it was okay. Dance Macabre, which was a, a great song that we both agree. And then Pro yeah, Memoria, was Pro Memoria was so, also an that's okay a hot song. Track. Yeah, and Witch Image, which is we both agree was a great song. Yeah, I liked Witch Image, and then the, and then the song Fate. I thought yes. it was interesting, Jimmy. You're talking about you know the, the instrumental side. You know, they have this keyboard outro at the end of that song, and it actually reminds me of some of the, I guess, versions of Yes with Rick Wakeman. Just, yeah. You know, some of that keyboard passages. So you have these these tonalities or these sounds that come through that are, you know, some of them are reminiscent of Lover Boy, you know, real commercial 80s pop or rock, hard rock. And then you have, you know, this very prog-oriented keyboard sound. So it's, it's almost like they kind of fall in a wide range of prog and you know, heavy rock, you know, European power metal, and also this very pop sound, you know, and I, I think they've evolved from more of like a Blue Oyster Cult, dark Blue Oyster Cult kind of a, you know, reminiscence to, you know, because they got the look of, you know, Bathory. They got the look of King Diamond. Yeah. It looks like Bathory, but it sounds like, uh, you know, like Ario Speedwagon. Klaus Mein, Klaus Mein singing uh, the final countdown so i mean what are you gonna do? 10 songs and there were about seven let uh, three letdowns sorry there are three letdowns 10 songs so i would put it more like the songs that are great are truly great songs for a pop rock rock band this is not a heavy metal album this is a pop rock album and if you like that style of pop rock then you're going to dig it if you like a element of prog you're going to dig it if you're expecting heavy metal forget about it you're not going to like this album you might like to see them in concert because it's a cool image and everything but that's about it so i'd probably put it like an eight out of ten yeah it's a dark gothic image that they're projecting you know the the whole 
show and the image, and I think it's great. I, I think it's great that kids will be looking at Ghost instead of uh, EDM music. You know, at least there's people playing on stage, you know. It's not just all a DJ and pre-recorded and lights and no no musicians on stage. So I, I think in that respect, it's great. I mean, and these guys are obviously coming from the world of heavy metal, so I think that's also a great scenario. But they're really kind of a hybrid band. I mean, they're 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 a crossover band. They're they're crossing over into multiple genres with their sound. And I think, you know, because of that, I, I would say, even though they they do have these instrumentals on the album, I just have to give it to Ghost and give them a nine out of ten, just because. Jeez. <laughs> just because it's going to be a huge album for him, I, I could just see that writing on the wall, and I can say that, you know, the fans of Ghost, I think they're going to accept it really well and love the album, and there'll be some purists that might say, oh, this is, a, you know, quite a bit different from the past. But I think it's going to propel the band, you know, to the next level. So I gave it an 8, you gave it a 9, so we can average it out to 8.5 out of 10 for everybody out there, right? I think Ghost is... You know, they're they're a band that's just they're they're going to be a band to be reckoned with even more so. I mean, you know, and they'll be around for a long time. So there you have it. Okay, everybody, go pick up the new Ghost album prequel. You won't be let down unless you're expecting heavy metal. So Neil, tell us about your interview with the Necromantics. And I just interviewed this amazing band. They're a psychobilly band fused with elements of heavy metal and punk rock and and rockabilly band's called the necromantics they've been around since 1989 you got to check them out and jimmy i had the opportunity to speak with the guys from the band after their show they were gracious enough to you know take some time out to speak with me backstage and i mean wow what a show it was it was amazing to um check them out so it's it's kind of uh you know ironic that we're we're doing a review of the band ghost because i think the necromantics kind of fall into that same world except they're in the psychobilly rockabilly world all right, so here we go. How you doing? This is Neil Turpin with The Metal Voice, and we're here with none other than The Necromantics. we got Kim and Renee from The Necromantics. It's so awesome to be here with you guys. You guys put on an amazing show. Thank you. Here at the airliner over here in downtown Los Angeles. Yep. So you guys aren't from around here, are you? Well, originally not, but now I live just up the street. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. You're I'm from Denmark. I'm from right? Denmark, and René is from Montreal, Chile. <laughs> Montreal, Chile? I didn't yeah. know there was a Montreal, I Chile. Know. Yeah, I exists. need to go to Chile. <laughs> and actually, our guitarist, that he, he's tired. So that's why, that's why we, don't, we don't see him right now. He is from Venezuela. And if you guys are thirsty, I got some freaking beer. Oh, you yeah. ready? Oh, oh man. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so anyway, no, no. I'm sitting on mine though. So anyway, I was just talking about that. But so I hear you guys have an album that's going to be coming out maybe in 2018. Hopefully later this year. Uh, we are working on it right now. Um, like tonight was actually Renee's first show with us. Wow, that was my first show. Amazing. That was his debut, yeah. And Renee stands up and plays the drums. I yeah, mean, it goes pretty fast. And yeah. you guys are psychobilly. Yeah, you're kind of a crossover, maybe sort of, yeah. kind of. Yeah, there's yeah. some there's some flavors of heavy metal somewhere. Well, and, I like the metal and, and yeah. psychobilly and rockabilly mm -hmm. and classic, you know, rock and roll. I mean, just yeah, all the time. Yep. And, and you guys are very visual. So what I like is, you know, necromantics. I mean. When you hear the name, and it's like if you haven't seen the band, it's like wow, you guys have been around for a while. Yeah, he has a super cool bass. That's true. Oh, yeah, yeah, you got to check out the coffin bass. I mean, with the cross on yeah. it. Yeah, wow, I got a little bit of footage. I know. Um, well, yeah, I formed the band in '89, so I mean, we know spring chickens anymore. You guys had, I think you guys had a girl drummer at one time? We did. Okay. We did. She played in high heels or something? She did, yeah. I tried to convince him to play the high heels. I know. I, I, got, I got, and I even got asked to do a video with high heels to see. Well, I was like, oh man, I didn't have time to do it though. <laughs> so, so what are some of the songs, like you guys, you know, you write original music and this is Psycho Billy. What are some of the songs about? What are Well, you know, most of the songs are about anything and just life but all wrapped up in a horror universe um, you know i can write a love story but it will end up being about you know graveyards and dead girls 
that's cool because I mean you guys are the necromantics. Yeah, so. exactly. But but the message is you know, and the show and the show kind of you know ha has that it just you know it, it wraps its arms around that. And it's really cool. I mean I was I was blown away just you know having the opportunity to see you guys tonight. And I love the psychobilly scene. You know I love bands like the Sharks and Resurrects. Mm -hmm. You know, like some of the un lesser known bands that are in the psychobilly or, or rockabilly genre. And one, one of the bands, um, unfortunately, the singer died. High Strung Ramblers, amazing band. I mean, so many. Quarantes, I mean, I can just keep listing. Gutter there's Demons lot, tonight. Yeah, were great. there's a lot of cool, cool bands. Gutter yeah. Demons from Canada. Yeah, they were great tonight. And but they're not from Canada, Chile, so. Not the, not the, the, other, Montreal. <laughs> not the other Montreal. Not the other Montreal. shows are packed and you know you guys have a great vibe and you know it's a kind of a crossover right you guys have some heavy it, overtones well it is I mean this band always attracted you know people with long hair people with no hair um, psychobillies rockabillies and so yeah it's always been like a crossover and I always been you know I always appreciated that you know it wasn't just psychobillies that it's like get. super high energy. To Renee, shows, you Renee know? the drums tonight, I mean, you're playing fast beats. These yeah, are not, no, but it's like super high energy. This like, is not it doesn't like, matter like if you're standing up, like playing drums, like just, or sitting down. It's the like energy, you know? Yeah, yeah you, you, guys, out. you guys got furious energy, yeah, fierce, yeah. and it's moving, and, and people like, are. Because I said just before, like, check out the bass, you know? Like, the people are like, oh yeah, it's a stand up bass, whatever, but check out the fucking bass, okay? First of all, and then check out the fucking sound. There's a lot of people that you know like metal, and they're like, "Oh, that fucking like." Yeah, because know, it sounds it sounds like pedal. a double double kick. Now is that a double bass? That's what that's called. It's, it it is a double bass. I mean, obviously this is not a normal double bass. Right. It's Here's a, a bass. custom yeah. build. That's the thing too. That's why I'm saying check the fucking. <laughs> Check the bass. <laughs> it's an amazing the bass. But it's but it's got the tone. It's got the percussion. Yeah, you the, sound great. And the percussion mm -hmm. kind of gives that. Because you can get like like you know like if you like metal you can get like the. And then you're confused, but it could, because it's not the drum doing like, it's actually the bass going like, tick, 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 you know? So it sounds like a double pedal, and my job in the band now is like to keep the fucking thing. So you the play, bass. so you play double pedals. No, I keep one you hit, can. but you, he you, does you the fucking tick, 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 tick. You understand? Yeah, I understand that. So it's the same connection, you know? It's the same connection with metal. It's the same like. But, then, but, there's, but, there's, but there's no need for, because I do it. Right. Exactly. Right. That's what is cool because he's able to change like the rhythmic of it in two seconds. So it, it's almost like if the band would be like, right. you know. So that's really cool what he does. Right. The style of music is very, you know, it, it, it's all about, you know, like if you look at some of the old classic soul songs like back in the '60s, yeah. you know, you have the drum beat that's on the down. Yeah. Down. Everything's down. Yeah. The guitar's on the down. So, so the guitar instrument was not the soloing instrument. You had horns and yeah. keyboards. Yeah, you had everything on off time. So, so, da, 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 so of course, in the rock yeah. music world, you know, the guitar became more up front. Yeah. But back in those days, it was like it was a, it was an extensive extensive yeah. arm of the, uh, the percussion. Yeah. But I think yeah. necromantic has this thing like it's like you can do like like. If you go with the stand-up bass, you, you think rockabilly, you know, like ding 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 But then you have metal, so how do you do this, you know? If you go like that's where this thing comes in, into this super tight rhythmic, you know? That's what he's able to do. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. And, and it's not only music, musicality, it's not only that, but it's the showmanship, it's a, yeah. it's a performance, and you guys really Brain oh, yeah, it's true. You put that, your finger on your nose. That it factor. I mean, you got some, <laughs> you got some ink there, and it's like you know, he's yeah. got the, he's got the eyes. He's doing stuff on stage. I mean, it's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, it's 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 about energy for me. That's that's, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm just saying like like when I, whenever like I'm I'm the new drummer, the very new drummer. So uh, yeah, no, when it was 
younger, I loved fucking things like psychobilly, rockabilly. You know, and then like, you know, you hit like one time you hear a fucking band and it's like, <laughs> right, talk a little bit. And Just this, because people this band, speaking. yeah, this band was necromantics, you know, for me. And I was like, wow, this fucking thing is like crazy, man, you know. And now you're in the band. Yeah, that's fucking crazy again. <laughs> but uh, that's what it was. The bass. Can, can you? It's Can you all about the bass, the bass, the bass, like, like cut me in, the bass, the bass. <laughs> and one thing that's really striking to me that I notice about, um, you know, the, the people that are part of the rockabilly and the psychabilly scene here in Los Angeles and Long Beach and, you know, where, where there's venues and where there's, you know, gigs because psychabilly is still kind of, um, it's not broken, you know, the mainstream in a yeah. huge way, but it's, it's, it's out there. There's it's it's out there, but it's, it's still on the ground. Yeah. The, the thing that really strikes me is that the people, for the most part, most everyone, is down to earth and, and very cool and approachable, mm -hmm. like you guys are, and to me, it's like the egos are left at the door, and, and when you go hang out with these kind of guys at a psychobilly venue and Psycho, you know, rock uh, really. I think it's so important. There's not a lot of fights. You don't. You, yeah, you know, no, you're not, you're not exactly. getting. You're not getting beer thrown on. No. You're not. You know, it's like the girls are cool. The guys are cool. I mean, people are are friendly and it's you all, know. I mean, it's, 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 it's a time. cool scene. Yeah. You guys got a cool, a cool rock and roll scene. Yeah, yeah we do. It's always. A, I mean, there used to be a scene up on the Sunset Strip by the Rainbow, but now I think it's the rockabilly and the psychabilly in L.A. Yeah. For me, I think it's great. I mean, you got the thrash scene. You got a heavy metal scene in L.A. But. You know, we should do that trash metal. You could. You guys, you guys got the speed. I don't think it will handle it. Well, I, I just thank you guys for, for doing this interview with me after, after your show. I mean, we're here at 2 in the morning, so. Thanks and so was much. Loading, loading the car. My wife is waiting. Yeah, thanks, thanks to Cam and Renee from the Necromantics. You're, You're watching the Metal Voice. Stay tuned for some psychobilly.